with Kenny Tan and David Moore, who are running for President and Executive Vice President of Vanderbilt Student Government. Welcome to the show. Let's jump right in. Uh, first of all, can you guys tell me a little bit about why you are running? Sure. Um, so I came to Vanderbilt as a person dedicated to creating, uh, well, I wanted to create my student organization the minute I stepped foot on campus. I created Young Americans for Liberty, which I started up and now has close to 300 members. And I really feel that th the connections between the student body are really important and VSG facilitates those connections very well. And it's a great opportunity to improve the, uh, to close the gap between the student body and VSG. If I'm in office, I would like to promote a lot more accountability and transparency and open dialogue about important campus issues through VSG to do that. And uh, David? On to me, well, all right, coming in, um, I came into Vanderbilt as a transfer student from a school in Ohio called Ohio Wesleyan University. And there I served as my, in my freshman year as uh, third in power on our executive board, so I was kind of right underneath the vice president. So making all those decisions as a freshman, I really learned really quickly how to lead a student government uh, very efficiently. And it became sort of a passion of mine, actually. I went from not being involved in any sort of student government in my life to like jumping right in there. And um, after a heated election, it became a really big part of my life. So I'd like to regain the amount that it was in my life, I suppose, here at Vanderbilt. Um, you see, when you go to university, I'm sure everybody that goes here knows this, but when you go to university, it sort of becomes part of you. And in that way, I want to give back part of me. If that makes sense. Thank you. And can you tell me a little bit about your involvement in Vanderbilt student government? Mm -hmm. um, I've served in VSG for the past year as the uh, area representative for Alumni Lawn, and right now I'm also a member of the ACFI Service Subcommittee. Um, oh, all right. Um, when I was at Ohio Wesleyan uh, last year, I emailed actually Adam right after he won his election. I had, uh, just got, um, I became interested in Vanderbilt after I got accepted, or more interested, and I looked on uh, online, found Adam was the president. And I said, oh, well, I should uh, get to know that guy, figure out um, what Vanderbilt student government's like. So I got a hold of Adam and, um, via Facebook and email, and he told me how good of a place uh, Vanderbilt was. So that got me thinking, like, if they have a good student government and it's a great place to be, then maybe it's something I'd like to go to. So I ended up here, and um, I, I found out that pretty much at the beginning of the year, the only thing that I could get myself on as would be an area representative. So I am now the uh, area representative for Towers, coming from Towers too. And my roommate's actually the Towers 2 president. And uh, between, between the two of you, with your, with your you know, two years combined experience, you have, you have the least experience of, of the other tickets. Do you, do you think that that would impede your ability to lead Vanderbilt student government? No, I don't think so, because during the past year, I've gotten to know pretty much everyone in VSG. And I've been able to make a lot of friends in VSG. I think we can do a lot of work together to improve uh, Vanderbilt in the future. Oh. There's a lot different. Um, there's a big difference between experience and um, what you know and your abilities, I would say. And I'm not going to talk down their abilities by any means. But um, I actually started on at Ohio Wesley and um, beginning of the second week of my um, entrance to that school, I was able to take up a position uh, very comparable to our uh, representative or senator of power, actually, that we have now as a freshman there. So it's more, um, although I would say our combined experience now is actually three years total. But um, I would not say that experience has anything to do with leadership ability. There's probably guys sitting out there that have never done a day of uh, leadership in their life that could be president of the United States of America, which is fine. And other guys that have been president of the United States of America that probably shouldn't have been president of the United States of America, if that makes sense. So thank you. Right. And now, David, uh, specifically to you, th this is your first year at Vanderbilt. Yes. Do you, do you feel like you are qualified, having spent less time here than, than the other candidates, to take the second most important office in student government? Uh, absolutely not. Um, length of time at a place really has nothing to do with leadership ability again. Um, when you're put into a position, you really are, if you're able to handle it, then you quickly take up the roles, um, abilities. You, you figure out how to do it you're in your way. Um, like sort of if a person is put up to the CEO position of a company, they understand how the company works because they're briefed on it and they become, it becomes integrated into who they are. So that sort of thing. Now, uh, Kenny, your leadership of Young Americans for Liberty uh, makes you, I, I would say, the most outspokenly political candidate on the cam campaign trail right now. How would you represent the interest of students who disagree with you politically? Well, I am definitely open to hearing students' opinions, and I have um, been able to reach out to a large uh, variety of political organizations on campus. I'm uh, familiar with what the uh, Occupy Vanderbilt group is now doing on campus. Um, I've been um, receptive to the opinions of other groups, like College Democrats, College Republicans, 
and at the same time, the presence of my student organization adds a lot more diversity to the opinion, to, to uh, political uh, culture on campus. And your VSG history has taken on some uh, issues uh, that some would say are, are more political, um, particularly with you know the uh, birth control mm -hmm. issue that you raised earlier this year. Would you push your own political views uh, on on the government as as president? No, not necessarily. I I would like to use VSG to um, talk to facilitate more open dialogue about the very important issues on campus, and I think that in particular with the. Uh, uh, Plan B resolution that I proposed. First of all, it was just a survey. Uh, I wanted VSG to do a survey of what the students thought about Plan B. And that, simply by introducing that resolution, there was a very long debate over the merits of Plan B and the merits of even serving students about it. So I feel like introducing those ideas into VSG is very important. And what we get from the debate is also very valuable. And while we're on the subject of your, your history uh, and, and involvement in VSG, uh, earlier this year you moved to have a vote of no confidence in President mm -hmm. Adam Meyer. Can you explain why you uh, made the decision to bring that to the table? Mm -hmm. I felt that after the, uh, um, the, the violation of the VSG budget statutes that occurred, there needed to be a symbol that uh, VSG was working toward more accountability and holding its leaders accountable. And I felt that having a vote of no confidence, what that would have done is simply start an investigation into what had happened. And I feel that the student body deserved an official investigation into what happened to find out what went wrong and what we can do in the future to make sure that the budget is proposed and the budget is provided to the public uh, within a reasonable time period. And that's what I was able to accomplish through the accountability and transparency omnibus that I proposed and passed successfully in VSG, which Make sure, make sure that the VSG minutes and the VSG voting records are published within 24 hours after VSG sessions and also requires that the budget be made public to the uh, Vanderbilt media. Now, how would you work to ensure that your, uh, that your administration was both accountable and transparent? Mm -hmm. uh, well, definitely, I think my record shows that I've pushed toward more accountability and more transparency. And there's been a lot of great work uh, since in VSG since then to reach out to um, the student body by making sure that the VSG blog has the resolutions that are going to be voted on in the next session made available before that session actually occurs. And there's a lot of work that can be done to reach out to student organizations individually and inform them about what VSG is doing in general and what its goals are. And uh, back, back on the vote of no confidence for a moment, um, you, you moved to have a vote of no confidence in Adam Meyer, what, was this also a vote of no confidence, uh, or, or did, did you lack confidence in the rest of the executive committee, including uh, the executive vice president, Mary Claire Maynard? No, no. Um, what I, th I think the term, the vote of no confidence, isn't necessarily an accurate, accurate term to describe what happened, because uh, the vote of no confidence, had it passed, would have simply started an investigation. It wouldn't necessarily have signified that uh, we're not confident in Adam Meyer, because I felt Adam Meyer was a well-qualified candidate for the position. And uh, now on to Tuesday night's debates for a moment. A on Tuesday night, you were the only candidate who took a stand on the school's non-discrimination policy, saying that you supported uh, the, the religious groups who felt that they were being discriminated against. Um, and as, as president, would you actively work to change this policy? I would definitely work with the administration in, um, to address any policy concerns that students have. One of the things that I've proposed is a student rights committee that would basically allow students to have an official voice uh, to, to the administration through VSG. And that's something I would definitely work on if I was elected president, to make sure that students' voices on these important policy issues are heard. And on to, on to the specifics of your platform, uh, you said that you want to reduce the gap between the student body and VSG. How do you define that gap, and who is responsible for it? Well, I think it's something that has just developed over time, that there, there's a certain demographic on campus that has sort of been in charge of VSG for a very long time, and there are minority groups on campus that don't feel that VSG represents them. And I'd like to add a more amount. I like to add more diversity, more opinions to VS to VSG. Uh, David, what are your thoughts on the the gap between the students and Vanderbilt student government? Oh well, it's definitely not something that's not seen at other universities. Um, having just come from another, but I've talked to uh, several presidents, and I have friends that go to several schools. And really, when you ask somebody how they feel about their student government, the answer is always 
something sort of negative or I don't feel like they do something unless they know what's going on in the inside, which they usually don't, or they usually don't care to find out. They're, they usually have a very negative feeling about that. And that's sort of um, a micro-representation of the macro system, which is the United States government. But um, I feel that the gap is definitely there, and it's not easily remediable, but it's, um, it is fixable. Um, opening up to the students, showing them what's going on, you know, um, Kenny's proposed uh, new committee, all of that can go into uh, bringing the students closer to the student government, because the student government is supposed to represent the students and what they want. But the students, if they don't feel represented by the student government, the things need to change. That's that. Now, another particular of your platform is that you say you want to add a new cell tower to campus. Uh, on Tuesday night, Mary Claire stated that a cell tower was already underway and was, was due to be completed soon. Where does your platform fit into that? Oh, well, I think it most definitely fits into that because I've, I've talked with uh, Vanderbilt ITS and they've told me that they, they've been having ongoing uh, talks with the major uh, cellular carriers like AT&T and Verizon and they're working on uh, making sure on, on installing a cell tower on campus and basically what my role as student body president would be is to make sure that those discussions continue to take place and make sure that student input is involved in that discussion. Now, uh, according to the information that Mary Claire as, as a VSG insider provided, uh, this, this is underway and this is in fact happening. So are you promising something that is already going to happen, regardless of whether or not you get elected? No, not exactly, because I feel like there's, there's always more opportunities to add more cellular towers on campus. If there's just this one instance of a cellular tower being located on a, in a particular area on campus, there could be other areas on campus where there could be a need for cellular, more cellular coverage in those areas. And uh, you, you discuss health and wellness as well in your platform. You mentioned binge drinking as a serious health issue on campus. Uh, what do you see as the main cause of binge drinking on campus? Well, um, I think that there's a, definitely a cultural um, impact. Um, I think the general culture towards um, binge drinking is something that's developed over time and it's not necessarily had a very good effect. Um, I've talked to various administrators about addressing the issue because a lot of violence that goes on campus is alcohol related and to reduce the violence on campus we can definitely address the culture regarding alcohol and there, there are programs um, that we could create in um, coordination with the administration, a program similar to the Green Dots program that would address the culture on campus. So are you discussing something similar to the um, alcohol education that, that first years must must do? No, not, not exactly, because the alcohol education is sort of impersonal and something get, that can be easily done online. Whereas um, the program that I, I'm thinking of is something that would be more one-on-one, -on -one, um, not, necessarily, not necessarily one necessarily one-on-one, but within a, a group um, in person and talking about what you can do to sort of intervene if you see your friend or someone you know just taking too many drinks and how to respond to that and how to talk to them and any techniques that you could use to um, get them off it. Uh, now, now another, uh, you mentioned culture change, another area in which you, you say on your platform that you would like to change culture is restroom culture. Um, what do you see as the current problem with <laughs> restroom culture yes, and well, how would you change it as president? Well, the reason why I put that on my platform is because it's actually a problem where I'm living and I think it's a problem pretty much everywhere on everywhere. campus. My, res um, my area coordinator actually sent out an email to the entire area about this issue where um, certain students are just not uh, keeping the bathrooms very clean and students, if they just kept, picked up after themselves and made sure to leave their, the bathroom um, in a good condition, it would reduce the amount of work, uh, amount of burden on our residential staff and at the same time create a much more welcoming environment for students. But specifically, what would you do to change this culture? How, how would you make sure that this culture actually gets changed? Well, I, f f just one example would be possibly putting up uh, flyers on, I guess, the uh, backs of restroom stalls, just a reminder, hey, you should, you should flush after you're done, because that would be nice. <laughs> right. I agree that it would be nice. Um, now, uh, it, uh, moving, moving back to the debate for a moment, um, it, was, it was clear on Tuesday night, uh, at least at the Common Center, there, there was more audible enthusiasm in the room uh, for your opponents. Uh, and also looking at the number of likes that all three campaigns have received on Facebook pages, the other candidates seem to have more support. Do you think that there's an enthusiasm deficit when compared with the other campaigns? No, I don't think 
there is a deficit. Um, there's a lot of support that we've been getting that hasn't been reflected necessarily in the turnouts of the debate because the debate didn't, I feel the debate didn't have as much publicity as uh, I would have hoped. And at the same time, there's a lot of underground support for our campaign that n will show up eventually when the election occurs. Um, now, now, you two are both sophomores this year. Uh, the other presidential candidates are juniors, rising seniors, which means that you'll be here for two more years. Do you plan to, uh, you know, re regardless of whether or not you win or lose, do you plan to run again next year? I plan to continue my involvement in VSG. I've enjoyed my time in VSG thus far, serving as an area representative. And if I were to not um, succeed in this election, I would definitely consider other opportunities to continue um, in, in VSG, for example, as a residential or an academic center. Um, now, now, we're almost out of time. One last question to, uh, to get you out of here on. Uh, on. On your Facebook page, it says, David, that you are from small town Ohio and, and grew up riding horses. Kenny, you are from Brooklyn. Uh, those, are, those are two very different environments to come from. What's, what's it been like working together? Well, um, I think we've definitely been able to uh, work together. Uh, we've enjoyed the experience. Um, there, there haven't necessarily been any problems as, as a re caused by the difference in uh, uh, hometowns. Oh, sure, yeah, well, um, really, I, I'm not saying that I was from a log cabin in the middle of the woods with no electricity. I actually grew up with the internet, believe it or not. So um, I'm pretty much uh, as cultured or more, more cultured than most other people that I come to meet. So. I find that I'm able to keep up with them on the same level. It's not like um, not being from a city makes you an inhuman um, wood monster. I'm, I'm actually a regular guy too, you know? Kenny and I, we get along just fine. Like, I, I live in a city now, so it's the same concept, you know? So, good thing. Well, thank you both so much for coming on the show, and uh, best of luck. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much.